Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today will be the first step of text mining uh, of PDF article in R. So what you see in front of you is multiple PDF file with multiple keywords on the column. So what I plan to do today is how would I be able to look through all of the PDF file that I listed in the single folder and from there count the number of keywords that I listed out. So if, for example, if I want to be able to automatically understand uh, which article should I rank based on the 200, 300, 400 different articles that I have? You know, would I be able to create an automatic algorithm to, to count those keywords that appears and how many times they appear within a certain paper, for example? And I can actually separate out from paper that I need to read and paper that I don't need to read. So this is how I do it. So first thing first is to create a list file, is to create a file list of all the PDF file within, uh, within the within the folder so if you are not in your current directory which you can actually get just g gtwd means you get a current directory and if you are not in your current directory you can actually set your current directory by setwd in this case so you can set it to the directory that you want and make sure that this directory contain all the pdf file and the file will automatically list all the file as long as they end with a PDF extension. Okay, you can change this based on whatever uh, file format that you want, but the script that I run here only run on PDF. Okay, so the next one is to create a list of different keywords. So I only do one, two, three, four, five, six, six different of them here, just to give you an example, but feel free to list them down. Uh, this will automatically account for how many keywords are there and runs how many loop that you are. So just remember that every keyword that you added actually exponentially increase the calculation time and um, you might want to be careful in your key le keyword selection to make sure that they are only super relevant to what you're looking for. Unless you have a lot of computing power, then it doesn't really matter. Okay, so the library we're using today is Dipler, String, String R, and most importantly, PDF2. So PDF2 is the one that we'll be, that we'll be using to read the content from the PDF file. So, and the first two is the file length and the word length because we have, we have to determine how many files are there in, in total and how many word, how many keywords are there in total. And then we're going to generate a, a new list, in this case called word count, and we're going to set the dimension of the word count to a pre-existing number of file length times the number of word length. So in, it's always a good practice to preset the dimension of your array that you want to create so that it's actually a lot faster because the R don't have to automatically increase the size of the array on the fly of the loop. So if you can tell them the, the beginning, in the beginning of the loop, how big do you want the whole thing to be and they can pre-allocate the space for the calculation later, it's going to be a lot faster and a lot more efficient. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so next one, oops, I'm gonna go up a little bit. So I'm gonna run two separate loop. The first loop is gonna import the file one by one, and the second loop is gonna loop through the, the count algorithm within each file. So for the big loop, in this case, J for J in one length file, means that I'm gonna loop J from file one, file two, file three, file four, file size six and seven and so on. So in this case, we have six different files that we're looking at. So we're gonna we're gonna look one to seven. Okay. Before I forgot the word count that initiated just now, I automatically populate with some uh, sequence number. So in this case, one to forty-two, because when we create an empty array, we don't want to just uh, have some empty value inside. So I want to pre I want to pre-assign some value so I can actually see how many columns and rows I created as well as have an easy visualization of how the final matrix will look like, basically. Okay, once I've done that, uh, I'm going to, first of all, look through the number of files that I have, or in this case, one to seven, where each of them, what I'm going to do is to um, extract them and do some cleaning and pipe it to, assign them to object called P1. So what I do is that I use PDF2, PDF text, and file is equals to file J. Okay, so files, remember, is an object that I created earlier that contains all the list of directory of all the PDF within the folder that you created. And now I'm going to read through one by one. So every time they read through this file, I'm going to convert all the string to lowercase because 
you know, upper and lower is quite difficult to distinguish, so I'm going to convert everything to lowercase so that it's easier for my matching algorithm later on. And then I'm going to replace all the tabs, which means that I don't want any extra tabs to be in the situation. I'm going to replace all the uh, line breaks so that everything joins into a large uh, section. I'm going to replace all the uh, multiple space. In this case, I'm sure there's a better way to do it. But what I do is that uh, four space, three space, two space, and uh, sorry, this is five, four, three, two. So every every time I have a duplicated space region, I'll try to shrink it down so that later it's a lot easier for me to visualize the 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 text. And then I'm gonna replace all the digits, and I'm gonna replace all the punctuation, and I'm gonna trim the beginning and end space so that I don't when I print out the thing, it doesn't have too much space. So just for example, let me just go for j equals to uh, j is equals to one. Let's just load the first document and see what happens, shall we? So if you have a look, so p one, and you can see from the right, we have one to twelve, which means that uh, this file has twelve different page, or you know some other algorithm, so that when they read, they'll try to put every single page into a single um, string list in the in the object created. So in this case, I'm going to write type P1 and then I'm going to type 1, which is the first string. Okay, so as you can see, everything has been merged into a lot, nice, uh, long section. And we can just actually start our counting. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. Okay, so you have 12 of this and every single list object with all this thing. Uh, you can merge the list, but for the purpose of what we are doing here today, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so once we're done, we're gonna count, we're gonna create another for loop. So in this case, it's i in one to the length number of keyword. So in this case, we have six keyword. We're gonna loop through this um, code six times to count how many of them are there. Okay, so in this case, word count as j and i means that j is the row and i is the column. So what we're gonna do is that every time we do this count, we're gonna count the keyword one by one. And in the first paper, I'm gonna look through all the keyword, second paper, all the keyword, third paper, all the keyword, and so on. And that will create a two-dimensional matrix and we'll pipe it to, again, our original file called word count. Okay, so let's just run this because it's a really small number of PDF file and a small number of uh, keyword. This is really fast, but uh, take note that this will exponentially grow when when you go through it, uh, when you go through your actual file and mining situation. Okay, as you can see, the counting has finished. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, six different paper here and seven different row. Uh, no, the other way around, sorry. We have seven different paper here and six different keywords. So it's very hard to see with V1 to 6 and 1 to 7. So what we're going to do is that we're going to, um, we're going to course this matrix into a data frame. And from a data frame, we're going to assign the row name and the column name. And you can see that now column has all the keyword as a column and all the row number from as a, as a file name. So if this is what you're looking for, if this is the format that you want, you can actually stop the video here and this is what you... And you can use the code from here. But what I actually do is that, uh, because it is likely that you, you will have actually a lot more keyword than you have column, so I'm going to transpose the matrix so that I can see uh, my column as my paper and my keyword as my as my row. So this really depends on whether you have a large amount of paper or you have a large amount of keywords and, and so on and so forth. So as an extension, what I'm gonna do is that I, have a, I will have a bunch of paper that I think will be related to my topic and a other bunch of people that were not related to my topic. And I'll try to assign a weight to all of the different um, uh, row over here or different keywords over here. And I'll try to see if I can run a gradient descent to automatically classify uh, those uh, paper into two groups so that when I import a new paper into my algorithm, it should automatically understand whether it is above or beyond my cutoff and classify it as either relevant or irrelevant. So that in the end, I will only need to read the paper within the relevant region and I can ignore the rest. So. 
Uh, before that happens, I think that will be enough for today. Uh, hope you learned something. Again, you can actually find all of this code, which today is very short. You can find this code on my GitHub repository. And maybe we'll see you in the next video for the part two of text mining in our PDF form. Bye.